Currently, we're, we are here with Andres Jason from NYCFC, the fifth ever homegrown in NYCFC history, also currently attending Yale University as well. How are you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited for this. Dude, us too. We're super stoked to have you. I guess let's go straight into the first question. So let's take a blast straight into the past. How did you originally get into soccer? Because a lot of kids now, they play baseball, football, hockey, stuff like that. So how did you originally get into soccer as a kid? Yeah, I think as a kid, I kind of played like most kids, played a lot of different sports. Um, I kind of always had a, a special feeling for soccer. Um, I think my dad being from Argentina also helped a bit, you know, him having a, a little bit of a passion too. So I think um, those things together kind of made soccer really seem like it was my my favorite sport. <clears throat> so you said your dad's from Argentina. Are you also an Argentinian fan then? Yeah, I mean, I think I support um, the national team mainly like through Messi. Um, I don't follow like the domestic league too much, but um, definitely support the national team. One thing I saw online, because when we first heard you were coming on and everything and you answered the DMs, I was looking up just like some quick facts about you just to kind of get to know you a little more than the broad information that was already known. And there was this one website, I think it was by uh, New York City, uh, the NYCFC official website. It was uh, 10 things to know about Jason. And uh, one of them is uh, when you were playing soccer, you also spent a lot of time playing uh, tennis, correct? Was there any point of time, like growing up, you thought maybe you could take more of a career in a different sport other than tennis? I mean, other than soccer, rather? Um, I think I, from a young age, kind of knew soccer was really like the main, the main sport for me. But I think if I hadn't played a lot of other sports until I was like 13, 14, I might not have had such a big passion for soccer. I think, you know, like being able to play tennis or play all these different sports really like kind of made me just fall in love with sport in general and, mm -hmm. and not get like too tired of soccer too early, I think. No, it's totally kind of like blend into one. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. Exactly. And now this past fall, you just got your homegrown contract. Again, the fifth ever homegrown in NYCFC history. How was that? What was it like? Where were you? You know, how did you find that news that you're now in New York City FC officially? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it was kind of like a long process of, you know, talking to when Claudia was here at the time talking to Claudio um, and then, you know, talking to the different coaches. But I think when I finally got it done and realized, you know, I was finally signing, I think it was, I was actually at a field. Um, I had just finished playing with one of my friends and, you know, I checked my phone and all of a sudden my phone was like blowing up. Yeah. <laughs> <And all> the, <laughs> CFC had like, you know, done the official post and tweeted and all that stuff. So that was a pretty special moment, you know, overwhelming for sure to, kind of see all that on my phone at one time. It's awesome, man. Yeah, I imagine, like, I can't even imagine, like, some kind of, like, accomplishment like that. I mean, that's amazing. Uh, everyone has, like, a like a thing, I guess you could say. What would you say is one word to describe uh, you as a player, uh, you know, anything, like, persistent or determined? Uh, and your play style, if you were to compare it to any player right now in the league or a former player, uh, which one would stand out to you the most? Yeah, I think one word for, you know, my overall game would maybe be like hardworking, I think is, is a good mm -hmm. word, just both on and off the ball. Um, I think um, in terms of play style, maybe Bernardo Silva from Man City is someone that, um, you know, I watch a lot of film on and sometimes mm -hmm. that um, with some of the coaches, we'll look at film and, you know, see things that he does and say like, how can I add that to my game? So I think um, a player like him, I uh, can kind of relate to, you know, love being on the ball, um, try and be creative, take players on on the dribble. Uh, but then also get in and work defensively. So I think he's a pretty good comparison for me. I mean, yeah, he's definitely uh, not even a good comparison, like a good um, player to model your uh, play style afterwards, I would say. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, with that being said, you said hardworking. Being hardworking uh, going into this upcoming season, do you have any kind of, uh, I guess, goals you could say you have set personal achievements for this upcoming uh, season? Yeah, yeah. I think, um, you know, personally, I want to be able to compete for minutes um, and try and really make an impact on the team. I think when you're a young guy, it's easy to kind of sit back and almost watch. Um, but I think for me, it's really important to be on the front foot, um, know that I'm, I'm there for a reason, compete for, for minutes and make sure I'm, I'm learning every day because there's so many players on the team that you can learn from and um, coaches that can give you little bits of advice. So I think just uh, compete for minutes and really be, be open to learning. Oh, yeah, exactly. yeah. Uh, another question I have, uh, unless there was something else you wanted to add to that is, you know, out of all your years playing soccer, uh, professionally, unprofessionally, 
Uh, was there ever a goal you scored that really stands out to you, a uh, favorite goal or moment that you had on the field? Um, I think maybe for, for favorite goal would be um, we were in uh, the Netherlands playing against the Netherlands. Um, I think it was 1-1 at the time and maybe 85th minute um, ball like bounced down. I uh, hit it one time, scored, and it was kind of like the game-winning goal. Everyone kind of went crazy. So I think that was a pretty special moment especially do it, you know, with the youth national team and against such a, such a big team like the Netherlands. Yeah, definitely yeah. the first of many as well. Again, you're only 19 years of age. You have so much to look forward to yeah, in your career. So many time, uh, so much time left, like a huge career, definitely for sure. Yeah. And before you talked about creativity in your game, we looked at some highlight reels. You like to nutmeg a lot of players. That's something you specifically <laughs> trained for because <laughs> you're, you're literally nutmegging everybody out here. <laughs> uh, I think, um, you know, it is definitely something that you, you have fun doing with your friends, but I think for me personally, when I'm in a bit of like a tight space, I think defenders generally think, you know, he's either going to go left or right. And a lot of times they'll kind of just cover both those options. So usually a nutmeg is like an easy way to, to get out of a, a tight space because going left or right might not work if, if the defenders already covered those options. Make it look easy though, again. And in the pre last year in preseason, when you verse teams like Palmeiras, Corinthians and stuff like that, and also Tigres in your debut, which defender would you say was the hardest to go up against in your career so far? I would say probably the most, you know, like wow moment for me was against uh, Felipe Melo. There was one play where I was kind of dribbling down the side and um, I think a defender kind of came in front of me and I, I like pulled him back a little bit and they, they called the foul and he came to the ball and I came um, – no, I'll get no, I thought it was on our end for a second. Yeah, and there's, <laughs> I was, I was like, like looking at all the phones. I'm like, where is this coming from? Yeah, I was like, is that me? <laughs> yeah. All good, um, no, but see, so, yeah, coming point. down the side and a defender um, kind of like came across and I pulled him a little bit and the ref called the foul and I maybe took one extra touch on the ball and kind of then stopped playing. And Felipe Melo just came out of nowhere and just smacked me. And I like flew up in the air and came down and in my head, I was thinking, like, like, what is he doing? Like, what's his problem? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's like, what are you doing? And he's, like, cursing me out, like, what am I doing? And I was just, like, so, like, confused as to, like, what was going on. And I think that was a, a moment of kind of his competitive nature, like, getting in the opponent's head, um, which was kind of a cool moment for me because I was like, how, how is this my fault right now, you know? <laughs> yeah, that would have phased me too, man, having Felipe, you know, Melo just yelling at you, man. Yeah, I see for me personally, like, again, you know, I don't have the pleasure of like playing on the field, but I, I work more in the construction field. And when somebody's yelling at me, man, it's like, I, I go out, man, I can't be yelled at. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. The tattoos are all talk. I'm, I'm like a, I'm like a fifth speak, man. <laughs> and I, we mentioned this before in the intro, uh, unlike most players, you know, you're going to college with Yale and also playing a professional career. So how do you juggle the both of that? Because that's insane, man, going to college and professional soccer. Not even just the college, like Yale. I mean, Yale's always like growing up you here is just the, being the big one, you know? I mean? Like when somebody's going to Yale, I mean, that's the big deal, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I think a lot of it is just being like proactive. I think, um, you know, we'll train, you know, get in pretty early, but we'll be done by two, three o'clock every day. So most, most guys probably get home, have a family or, you know, have to pick up the kids or something. But for me, I'll, I'll just get home and, you know, not much to do. So either do schoolwork or I'm playing Xbox. So I don't think it's too, too big of like a commitment. Um, as long as you stay on top of things, if you start kind of just leaving work for next week or stuff like that, then I think it'll pile up, but I try and stay on top of things. And I think so far, um, with most stuff being online, it hasn't been too bad. Um, so I actually have a side question. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt no, no, you. No, I it. actually have a side question. So I'm just completely separate because I know you have another question you want to ask. But you're saying like going home and playing Xbox. Uh, I mean, I only assume, you know, because you play the game that you do play FIFA as well. The first time you saw your name in the game where you're just like, I'll get all my buddies here. Like, you guys got to check this out. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think the the first time I saw it was one of my friends sent me a video of it. And I was like, oh, they updated it because I signed like kind of in the middle of the year. So I wasn't sure when they put it in. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he sent me a video and of course played some of my friends, you know, had to start myself, score a goal. Yeah, of course, right? Cool. <laughs> You're going out there like scoring yeah, like six goals a game. Against like, like Real Madrid <laughs> or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, now back to school, uh, what are you going for exactly? You know, like like what major, what, what do you want to go for school? Yeah, so right now I'm technically undeclared, but I think 
um, economics will probably be my major. And so right now I'm just trying to bang out some, some of those classes that are required for it and then just see what, what I have left after that. Yeah, I was going to say, if it was biology and I went for biology, I'll give you some notes, you know, organic chemistry, you know, anatomy, <laughs> okay. i give you some yeah. notes. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, aside from just talking about a little school, uh, what's your thoughts? And th- to you too, just like open discussion, because it's just an opinion on the new jerseys this year, the new kits unveiled by NYCFC, those powder blues with that white trim. And you got the logo engraved on it. I think they look so fresh. And since uh, NYCFC joined the league, I believe, was that six years ago now, right? Mm-hmm. Which is, that's crazy to think about how fast time has gone. And all the jerseys they've worn there's been some really good ones for both of you do you have one that has really uh stood out as being one of your favorites and especially for you do you have one that you would kind of wish they would bring back or is the one they're wearing right now the one that you're most excited to be wearing this season um i think in terms of home kits i think this home kit is is really nice um yeah i mean i love it yeah the way they have the logo and they have like different shades of blue um but it's like super low key so you can't really tell I really like this this home kit, to be honest. You know, I was watching the first game and I was looking at the kits and I was like, wow, these these look clean. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> yeah, and then in terms of one that I'd bring back, um, I think they've done some pretty cool, maybe like second or third kits, so maybe one of those. But I think the home kits, they've done a really good job of, of keeping them consistent to, you know, like NYCFC and what we are, but also changing them a bit each year. Yeah, I think that's a really good answer, actually. Like, clutch that. Yeah, these kids are definitely <laughs> my favorite by far, you know? Like, yeah, I love like Andre said, you know, the little, like, the street NYC logo mm-hmm. on it, it's, like, beautiful. Yeah, I, I just feel it. like of all the kids they've worn, yeah. like, since, again, joined the league, they've all been nice. And uh, they kept it to the who they were, like you said, but it just has so much more personality, I feel, this year. Exactly. And uh, the next thing I want to talk about is I was saying before when you first came on and we heard we were having you on the show and everything – is I had to do like a little research and I was looking up uh, all these different things on that same website where I was talking about tennis and soccer was uh, growing up. It said your favorite player was Lionel Messi, correct? Yeah. Now, growing up, your favorite player being uh, Lionel Messi. When those rumors were stirring up last year, a couple months ago, rather, about Messi possibly coming to New York City, what was going through your head? I mean, if that was me, I don't know what would be going through my head. That would just be like your role model, your favorite player growing up, that excitement. Like you got to walk me through that. Yeah, I think, um, I think those rumors started, you know, spreading around maybe like September, October. Um, and I ended up signing in November. So I remember kind of screenshotting that stuff and like sending it to my dad. And, yeah, yeah. and in my head, I was thinking like, if he's coming, then I have to sign. Like there's, no <laughs> that's off. the reason. Um, yeah. But like the thought of sharing the field, like as teammates was just like, not even not even yeah. a childhood dream. Cause you don't even, you know, that's not even something that you kind of dream about, but yeah, it's like another reality. Time. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's crazy. I couldn't imagine being in like that position. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, and I, I mean, down the line, you never know. I mean, that can always be something. Yeah. It still could happen. You know, I mean, you know, if he's playing here, you're playing somewhere with him. I mean, how awesome would that be? Again, like, I don't even know how I would handle that. Um, but back to just different players and stuff. Uh, again, same website was giving me this, or this may have been from somewhere else. I mean, uh, when you got to NYCFC, when you got to the team, uh, Maxi Morales, that was your uh, biggest influence. They sound the team, you know, it was, very uh, inspirational and everything. Do you have any funny stories about Maxi in the locker room or really just any player or even a coach of the club, any kind of stories that come to your mind? Um, I think, you know, with, with Maxi, it's, it's interesting because once you get to know him, he's such like a fun, playful guy. He's always joking, but seems like it. it's always interesting when the Academy kids, you know, now not me anymore. Cause I've like gotten to know him better, but when the Academy kids will come for the first time, he'll, he'll always, you know, like say something that sounds like he's being super serious. Like, like, Hey, like, what are you doing? And they're just like, <laughs> water, and they'll just like freeze up. Cause they don't know what they did wrong. And he like, will hold a straight face for maybe three or four seconds. And then he'll just start laughing. And then they'll finally read that realize he's joking. But it's always funny when he messes with, with the younger guys and they don't realize that he's joking. <laughs> that's, that's actually, great man. Yeah, that's actually really awesome uh because i mean i have his jersey that's the only jersey for the uh club i actually own you know i love him but uh so that's actually really cool to hear um going into uh i believe the final question unless you have anything else you want to add afterwards the, the final question here yeah so the most important is, one as well yeah honestly the one that matters the most to me big pizza guy here <laughs> everybody knows new york city is the capital 
of the pizza district. I mean, you're talking pizza. The first place that comes to your head is not even Italy. It's New York City. Unless, you know, some people from Chicago, but that's deep dish pizza. I mean, that's a different game. You know what I mean? That's a different breed of pizza. You don't compare soup and cereal. You know, it's two different leagues here. But coming from Canada, I think maybe Barstool, Barstool Sports was the first place that said this, is that uh, Canada has now the best, not Canada, Connecticut Connecticut has the best pizza in the world. Now, me being from New York, born and raised, I mean, that's just insulting to me. And I know a lot of people love Connecticut pizza. So now you spending time, plenty of time growing up in Connecticut and now being in New York, New York City. Can you verify this? Or if you were to say, it, is there a better place to get pizza or which of those two places? Where do we get the pizza from? <laughs> oh, that's a tough question. If I'm being honest with you, I probably have had a lot more Connecticut pizza than New York mm-hmm. pizza. Um, like I know like at Yale, there's a lot of different pizzerias that everyone says like, oh yeah, they're the, the best pizza in the country. They were voted <laughs> in that. So those, those are the pizza places that I've tried. I haven't tried any New York pizza that people have said like, this is the best. So I won't be able to compare. I've tried the best Connecticut. I don't know if I've tried the best New York yet. So once yeah, I try yeah, the best man. New York, I'll get back to you. You would know if you tried that. Definitely get back to us yeah. on that one. What's your favorite pizzeria? <laughs> the one right here in Huntington, right? Uh, probably Little Vincent's. Little For Vincent's sure. is yeah. really good. Brooklyn Pizza is really good. Like not even like the place Brooklyn Pizza. Just like go to Brooklyn, get, some, get a slice. It's incredible. <laughs> 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 but uh, I mean, overall, uh, I think that wraps up everything we have on our end. I think so too. Yeah. Is there any uh, thoughts or anything on your yeah, end? Anything, you wanna... anything you want to say going into the season or you good? Um, no, I think we're, we're really excited to get going, um, especially be back at Yankee Stadium and, and have yep. some fans, I guess, in some capacity is, is awesome because it makes a really big difference for us. Um, you know, when you're gassed and you don't want to make that sprint and you hear the fans and, all right, I better make the sprint. So I think um, we're really looking forward to seeing the fans back this Saturday and, yeah. um, you know, hope to get, get on winning ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like we're saying, like, this is a double whammy for us, like we were talking about in the DMs on Instagram. I mean, you can see in the back here. I mean, it's all over in here. We're huge New York City fans. <laughs> the perfectly placed. Yeah. <laughs> the perfectly strategic place there in the center. <laughs> no, uh, I mean, I'm really happy to go back to the stadiums. Yeah, I mean, I can't wait to go see some games again, too. Yeah, uh, I can't wait to see you in person again. Uh, might be at one of those games, like one of those fans cheering you on. So. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing can't like wait. soccer atmosphere. I mean, no other sport, in my opinion, can compare it to it. Yeah, I think I mean it's incredible. I think with that, that just about sums up this interview. So thank you again for coming on. Yeah, really. Thank you. I uh, hope to do it again sometime and have a great season. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, guys.